the Lord be with you. Let us pray. God our Savior, you call us into your service. Make us wise and resourceful, children of the light who continue your work in this world with untiring concern for integrity and justice. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
A blessed good morning to everyone. And a warm welcome to our act of worship here today. Today is the 15th Sunday after Pentecost, and the collect and readings are for proper 20. Before we continue, let me extend a very warm welcome to all visitors in our midst, as well as to our online congregation worshiping with us via our Facebook page. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and perfectly magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. But to love things heavenly, and even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated for the ministry of the word. Mm -hmm. 
A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 8, beginning at the 18th verse. My joy is gone. Grief is upon me. My heart is sick. Hark the cry of my poor people from far and wide in the land. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is the King not in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their images, with their foreign idols? The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of my poor people, I am hurt. I mourn, and this day has taken hold of me. Is there no bad in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then? Has the health of my poor people not be restored? Oh, that my head were a spring of water, and my eyes a fountain of tears, so that I might weep day and night for the slain of my poor people. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Word of God, written in the first letter of Paul to Timothy, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. First of all, I urge that supplication, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all who are high in position, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God and our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and mankind, Jesus Christ, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was a test at the right time. For this I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I'm telling the truth. I'm not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. This is the word of the Lord.
said to the disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, what is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. And the manager said to himself, what will I do? Now that my master is taking the position away from me, I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So, summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it fifty. Then he asked another, And how much do you owe? He replied, A hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill and make it eighty. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is done, when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much, and whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. This is the gospel of Christ.
Heavenly Father, look with compassion upon your children as they place their trust in you. Pour out your blessings upon them and protect them from all harm and danger. Strengthen them daily against the attacks of evil as they make this journey of life. No matter their age, we pray that they feel your love and always seek to love you in all that they do. We ask these things through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I speak to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't think there's ever a week or ever a time for that matter. When we gather for worship, that the readings from Holy Scripture aren't interesting or even fascinating. Take the Gospel for today, for example. Many people for years have been captivated by it for one reason or another. The verse which says you shall, you cannot serve God in wealth are for those in love with the King James Version. You cannot serve God and mammon. It's a favorite for me. For others now, the middle part has been one of the most baffling readings in the Bible for them. You see, in what we often refer to as the parable of the dishonest steward, we come across what appears to be Jesus commending dishonesty. And we say to ourselves, no, Jesus could not have been doing that. We read the story again and again, and we begin to water it down. What down the dishonesty of the steward saying, well, he didn't do bad after all. <laughs> we look for the easy way out. So that we can reconcile the Jesus that we know. The Jesus that in our eyes would never commend dishonesty. We are quick to jump to the defense of our Lord, and we are ready to defend his honor, defend our faith. You see, we are so accustomed to looking at parables and substituting, substituting God for one of the characters. And then a parable like this one comes along, a parable where there is no discernible slot where we can fit God. We scratch our heads. We start to shape the reading for our own peace of mind. However, the parable today is no different to all the others. Jesus' words were geared towards making his message relevant to the people. So with that being said, let us reflect deeper today on the message so that we can truly hear what is being said. Luke tells us in verse 8, his master commended the dishonest steward because he had acted shrewdly. So I think we first need to ask, how was the steward true? I think his shrewdness started with him quickly realizing what he had and what he was about to lose, as well as realizing that poverty and begging were not options for him. <laughs> with this knowledge of himself, he quickly came up with a plan of action to make the people who were indebted to his master indebted to him. Yes, he was dishonest. But the one he was defrauding couldn't help but admire his shrewdness, couldn't help but admire how he sought to ensure his own survival. So what did Jesus have to say about what transpired? He said that the children of this age are wiser in dealing with their own generation than the children of light. I believe that Jesus is telling us that there is something that can be learned from the children of this age. And it has nothing to do with engaging in illegal or immoral activities. But with that being said, what can we as Christians really learn from this reading? 
I believe that this reading is encouraging us to pay attention to what is going on in our world, to see what we can learn from those around us to improve our ministry. When we look around at the businesses in our society and across the world, we see the savviness in how they work. We see the calculated risks that they take. We see people spending money to make money. And we know only too well that they will send some of us home to make sure that things are always to their advantage. They are shrewd. They know exactly what they should do to get what they want. Even the successful service groups in our society know how to play the game as well. And what they need to do to get the right amount of, of media coverage to aid their cause. These are the children of this age. They are true. They know what they need to do and they're committed to doing it. But what about us as Christians? Are we as committed to our faith as they are to their organizations or to their agendas? What about us as Anglicans specifically? Are we in this age committed to Christianity in such a way that we use the different types of media and the technology that are out there, or different types, or different ways of worshiping to get our message across? My friends, Jesus has opened our eyes to a fact that many of us have closed our eyes to. And that is that the people of this generation are knowledgeable about what is going on around them and they work to suit. If we think about it and are truly honest with ourselves, we as Christians today seem not to be as knowledgeable about what is going on around them. And so we continue to minister in a context that has passed by many years ago. We keep believing that change is bad and that the things that were left for us by those who brought the Anglican tradition to the Caribbean must stay in place. Even if the same people who brought these things to us have long since evolved in their understanding. Jesus is telling us that we need to be shrewd. We need to be smart. We must start being wise in the ways that we seek to carry out ministry in our communities in this modern age. Jesus spoke in the context of his society, and that is what we must do also. <clears throat> But, we must do so without using gimmicks and compromising our theology. We must be open to doing things differently because this is no longer business as usual. Many others who stay on the surface level of, of biblical reflection are pulling people towards themselves with their emotive style. Because they understand the importance of emotions and feelings. Maybe we can learn from them. Imagine if we could embrace the psychology of religion and the psychology of the human being with the depth of our theology. Then we would truly be able to reach persons in every stratum of society. Those in the world around us have opened their eyes to the change in trends, and the need for change, the necessity to diversify, and the wisdom of speaking the language that the people you want to reach are speaking. The world around us is doing it, even if it is often done for the wrong reasons. Jesus did it. And today's gospel shows us this clearly. So the question is, will we do it as well? The comfort of remaining how we were for ages has crippled us. The mindset 
that we must carry on the legacy of one person or the other continues to kill us. The failure of our churches to look outwards at the world we are called to minister to will surely condemn us. We cannot let this decline continue. The children of this age are wiser in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. No more must this be. No more must we limit the spreading of the gospel by an unwillingness to reach out and try new things. Because that in itself is certainly not I need. My brothers and sisters, from today onward, I want us to truly commit ourselves to God and engage in ministry that reaches out to all people in ways that they can understand and identify with. We need to do so, trusting completely in God, knowing that there are several ways that we can plant the seeds of love and ministry. And knowing as well that our faith guides us on how we are to water. But knowing that ultimately it is God that gives the growth. It is God that gives the increase. The children of this age are wiser in dealing with their own generation than are the children of life. These are true words, words we must learn from, words that can guide us, words that can change us. So my friends, as we look to the future, as we look to the now, let us from this day truly ponder these words. Let us now, with confidence, reaffirm our faith as we say the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is a signal or a We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made. One in being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified by the point of his life. He suffered for it, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In fulfillment of the scriptures, he ascended into heaven. And as he did that the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
He believed in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and His Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken in true prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Kindly sit or kneel as we pray. service to the church and to the world, let us pray to the Lord. May the church be wise in all our ways without departing from holiness. Sustain your people to be strong in prayer for the needs of the world. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those in authority, that they may lead the nations in peace and just government. We pray that all who are entrusted with responsibility may be faithful and honorable to their work. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Bless our families with peaceful lives. Keep us free from any creator's honesty in our work. Give us the grace of integrity in all of our relationships. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Have mercy on those who suffer from the dishonesty of others. We all have lost their employment and feel in despair for the future. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. It is your will that all shall be saved and come to know and come to the knowledge of the truth. Have mercy on the departed. Receive them in the love of Christ, who gave himself as a ransom. We remember in our prayers at this time the late Daniel Bonham, who passed away during the course of last week. Merciful Father, and Lord of all, Lord of all life, we praise you that humanity is made in your image and reflects your truth and light. We thank you for the life of your servant, Daniel, for the love and mercy he received from you and showed on his earthly journey. Above all, we rejoice that your gracious promise to all your servants, living and departed, that we shall rise again at the coming of Christ. And we ask that in due time, we may share with our brother that clear vision and we shall see your face in the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue to remember in our prayers her late majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, who will be laid to rest tomorrow. Remember, O Lord, your servant Elizabeth II, defender of the faith, who has gone before us with the sign of faith and now rests in the sleep of peace. According to your promises, grant to her and to all who rest in Christ refreshment, light, and peace. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. That we may be good stewards of Christ, we offer our prayers in his name. As we continue in prayer this morning, we ask your prayers for those persons who will be brought to the sacrament of baptism and for those who will be supporting them. We pray especially for Kobe and Kayla Foster, their parents, 
godparents and grandparents as they prepare for Colby and Kayla's baptism. Look lovingly on their parents, Lord, and watch over them, that they may be examples of your love, joy, and peace to their children, and indeed to all who come into contact with them. Watch over their godparents as they commit to support Kobe and Kayla. Guide them as they offer help and support to their parents now and throughout this journey of life. Look lovingly on Kobe and We ask your prayers at this time for His Majesty King Charles III. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and whose power is infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of your chosen servant Charles III, that he, knowing whose minister he is, may above all things seek your honour and your glory, and that all who are his subjects, duly considering whose authority he has, may faithfully serve, honour, and humbly obey him, in you and for you, according to your blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, world without end. Amen. I ask your prayers as well, my brothers and sisters, for all those who are mourning. We especially remember the family of Daniel. We remember particularly as well our own sister Yvette and her family as they mourn the passing of her brother. Let us bring to mind all those who we know are mourning at this time. Remembering as well the royal family. O merciful Father, who taught us in your holy word that you would not willingly afflict us. Look with compassion and bereavement of those for whom our prayers are offered. Remember them, O Lord, in mercy. Nourish their souls with patience. Comfort them with a sense of your goodness. Lift up your countenance upon them and give them peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. The wonderful song of a, a child Surely you must remind us of the precious gift of life and how we are called to cherish this gift of life. And so as we recognize the joy of life, the gift of life, let us join with our brothers and sisters who are celebrating, celebrating birthdays, wedding anniversaries, or, or any other anniversary. And if you are present this morning and you are celebrating, I 
I invite you to come forward at this time as we uplift you in our prayers. Let us pray. Almighty God, watch over your people as their days on this earth increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. We ask you to strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when they are discouraged or they are sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts with the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Abide with them all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The act of penitence. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you in our world. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, and that we may be delighted in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. brothers and sisters, we are indeed the body of Christ. By the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body and have all been made to drink of the one spirit. Let us then pursue the things that we make for peace and build up upon our lives. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
the prayer for the presentation of the offering. Father, we offer you these gifts which you have given us, this bread and this wine and this money, with them we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work, to become, through your Holy Spirit, a reasonable, bold, and lively sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become the channels of the world through the same Christ of the world. rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, whom you sent to share our human nature, to live and to die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. We therefore bring you these gifts, and we ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who offered himself in obedience to your will, the perfect sacrifice for all humankind. On the night, he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this when never you drink it for the remembrance of me.
to mind the death your Son enjoyed for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension, his continual intercession for us in heaven, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and life-giving sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering, and grant that we who eat and drink of these holy gifts may be filled with your Holy Spirit and become one body in Christ and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. May he make us a perpetual offering to you and enable us in communion with Blessed Mary and the whole company of heaven to share in the inheritance of your saints. With him, and in him, and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, in songs of everlasting praise.
We sing with that tune one more time. God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now out into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you, with guidance and sinless heart, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Greetings back to your home churches. 
Um, any other visitors who may wish to be acknowledged, can, we can do so at this time. Welcome. Okay, so, yes, moving on. So this coming Wednesday, the 21st of September, marks the 10th anniversary of ordination to the priesthood of our very own Father Jerome. speak on behalf of all of us when we say that we are happy that the path that God has put him on has led us to the led him to us here at the St. <laughs> and so we look forward to marking that occasion with him during the 9 a.m. service next Sunday the 25th of September. We wish you continued blessings. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, moving on, our Wednesday evening Bible study group meetings resume this coming Wednesday, the 21st of September at 7.30 p.m. using the Zoom platform. If you are interested in joining the group, please do reach out um, to either Sister Andrea Dilbert or Sister Debrie Kerbollet, and you can get further information from them. And our birthday fellowship resumes next, next week, Sunday. Um, our fellowship breakfast that we were having earlier on in the year, we will resume next Sunday with breakfast in the garden after the 9 a.m. service. So we look forward to meeting and greeting one another. Midweek Mass continues this Wednesday, the 21st of September at 10 a.m. And the bargain store, as you know, sadly closed its doors some time ago after quite a sizable donation to persons in need. There are some items that remain after the closing of the store, and these will be displayed next week after the 9 a.m. service for you to have a look and see what might be of interest. And of course, any donations towards those items would be gratefully accepted. And congratulations and bon voyage to our own brother Dequan Smith McConvey. Um, he travels to Scotland, Glasgow, on the 24th of September, so that's this coming week. Um, he will be taking up, pursuing a bachelor's degree in cello performance at the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland. <laughs> Wonderful. The Quan completed recently A Levels in Music, Spanish Psychology and Communication Studies, and also recently received a distinction for his ARCM cello diploma. And so we know that he will continue to go to great Congratulations. And I believe he also celebrates a birthday this week. So lots happening with him. Congratulations. Um, unless we have any other notices, uh, that's it from me. Do have a wonderful week all and see you here next week Sunday. Thank you.
be with you. And also with you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, let us now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. A blessed and enjoyable day and week to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.